Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The year is 2005. After almost 16 years off the air, Doctor Who has finally come back to our screens. Starring Christopher Eccleston as the ninth Doctor and Billy Piper as his companion Rose Tyler and with Russell T Davis as its showrunner, the revival goes on to become a massive success. It leads to a whole new generation of fans. But what if things had gone differently? What if the first series of the revival featured not the ninth Doctor, but the eighth? What if Paul McGann was in series one? Now, in order for this alternate timeline to work, Russell T Davis would have to approach the show's revival a little differently. It's no coincidence that he chose to go with a brand new Doctor of his own for Series 1 in our timeline. This was a deliberate choice as it helped to allow the revival to stand on its own two feet, without referencing back to the show's past. But obviously having Paul McGann instead of Eccleston would change all of that. So let's say, for the sake of this alternate timeline, that whilst RTD still wanted the revival to be a sort of clean slate, he also wanted Paul McGann to be given an actual chance to truly flesh out his Doctor. Some of you might think this might be a strange choice for him to go with, but it's the best way for this timeline to work, in my opinion. So anyway, Russell asks McGann if he'd like to come back to the part. And after Russell explained to him what he was planning, Paul McGann said yes. So how would a change of Doctor affect the course of Series 1? Honestly, not too much, at least in terms of the broad strokes of the series long arc. The time warp background would still exist, although it might mean that we might now never get the War Doctor later on as there wouldn't be a potential gap in the Doctor's personal timeline that he could fit into. And as I say, the Bad Wolf arc wouldn't need any real changes. The Eighth Doctor might react slightly differently to some aspects of a few episodes, such as him probably having a better relationship with Mickey than Nine ever did. Eight was nowhere near as sassy and sarky after all. But the whole course of Series 1 wouldn't really need any major changes. But what about his costume? Would he still wear his TV movie look? Or something like his Night of the Doctor one? I think something similar to his Dark Eyes outfit would be more likely. So just imagine that, but with a darker leather jacket than his dark blue one. So his Series 1 costume wouldn't be vastly different from the Ninth Doctors, especially since the Dark Eyes look was actually partly based on Nine's outfit, and he'd still use the same Sonic and TARDIS console room as Nine did in our timeline, since Russell would still want the revival to feel like, well, a revival. The gradually blossoming romance plot between the Doctor and Rose would still exist with the Eighth Doctor, as, well, he was the first Doctor to actually snog one of his companions. So overall, changing a Doctor for Series 1 from 8 to 9 wouldn't change the direction Russell T Davis took the Doctor in for that series. 8 would still be traumatised by the Time War and be disgusted at himself for seemingly wiping out all the Daleks and Time Lords. Remember, there wouldn't be a War Doctor in this timeline, so 8 would have been the one who had used the moment. But then we come to the question of how long would McGann want to play the role for? Would he leave after Series 1, just like how Eccleston did? Well, unless the same behind the scenes issues still happened, I can't really see why he would want to leave them. I think it's more likely that he'd stay on for at least another series. I won't go as far as to say he stays on for the whole of the first Russell T Davis era, as RTD would eventually want to get his own Doctor cast, and McGann would doubtless be absolutely fine with that. So we'll say McGann leaves after series two. Two series sounds about right to me, as it would allow McGann enough time to develop his Doctor, something that he was cruelly denied in our timeline. But wait a minute, let's rewind back a little. 
how would Paul McGann staying on for Series 2 affect the end of Series 1? Well, you could have the Doctor unable to save Rose at the end of the Parting of the Ways, but since I already went with that for my What If Eccleston Series 2 video, let's try something else. With us having settled on McGann staying on for Series 2, we obviously can't just stick to what happened in our timeline. So instead, let's say that 8 is able to convince Rose to let go of the Time Vortex energy. He gives an impassioned speech, which sways her. It might make the whole ending of the series seem a bit anticlimactic compared to what we got in our timeline, but we'll just roll with it. Rose would still be recovering throughout the Christmas invasion though, so she'd still take the place that the newly regenerated 10th Doctor took in our timeline. And maybe 8 would take Rose to New Earth as less of a joyride and more to have her checked out by the Sisters of Plentitude before he finds out that they're evil and before Cassandra has stolen Rose's body, of course. The rest of Series 2 would continue pretty much verbatim to how it did in our timeline. In terms of how the 8th Doctor would eventually regenerate, well, I did already have a Runaway Bride exit for my What If Eccleston had stayed for Series 2. So let's have the regeneration happen during Doomsday instead, even if there would already be a lot going on in that episode as it is. Let's say that as 8 and Rose are using the Void to suck all the Daleks and Cybermen in, a Dalek has just enough time to shoot the Doctor. This causes him to lose control of his lever and Magna Clamp. This is what causes Rose to get sucked in as she desperately tries to reach over to the Doctor's side. We still have that emotional Bad Wolf Bay goodbye scene, but this time it's even more emotional as the 8th Doctor struggles to keep the regeneration energy in long enough to say goodbye to Rose. Whilst Rose can tell something's wrong, she doesn't know that the Doctor's about to regenerate. As in this timeline, the Doctor obviously didn't regenerate at the end of the Parting of the Ways. The last Rose sees of the Doctor is still him saying, Rose Tyler. The Doctor then regenerates in the TARDIS, kind of almost dying of heartbreak in a way, even though the Dalek shooting him is what actually caused him to regenerate. Now, who would the ninth Doctor be in this alternate timeline? Would it still be Christopher Eccleston or someone else? Well, it could still be Eccleston, as obviously the behind the scenes issues that caused him to leave in our timeline wouldn't have happened, or at least not yet, but the Ninth Doctor's character arc, as we know it in our world, would already have been taken by the Eighth Doctor in this alternate timeline. Yeah, sure, Nine could have another arc entirely, but I just don't know if it would be the same. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have McGann regenerate into David Tennant instead. And then Tennant's first words would be the usual, what? 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 As Donna would still unexpectedly appear inside the TARDIS. Which means that Tennant's first story would then be The Runaway Bride. Donna would still refuse to travel with the Doctor at the end, as, again, I don't want to retread any ground I already covered in my What If Eccleston Series 2 video. And then both Series 3 and 4 would still play out the same. But now, instead of the year of specials, maybe Tennant gets a third full series, aka Series 5, with Lady Christina as his companion for that series. But some episodes of this Series 5 would still be made up of some of the specials. So, for instance, Planet of the Dead would obviously be the series opener, and the Waters of Mars would be the series finale, and split into two parts to accommodate this position for this alternate series 5, with Christina leaving the Doctor after being horrified at his Time Lord Victorious actions. The End of Time would then still be a two-part special, airing during the festive period of 2009 to 2010, and it would still feature David Tennant's regeneration into Matt Smith. How likely it is that Tennant would have been able to do a full series during 2009 is a bit up in the air, but it's the best I could come up with. But how would Paul McGann, being the Doctor Who fought in the Time War, affect the 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor? 
Well, he would obviously have to take the place of John Hurt's War Doctor. If you want to know how this would come about, here's a summary of an alternate version of The Night of the Doctor, written by Nanny Nom Noms, who also helped me with some other aspects of this video. The Eighth Doctor would still try to save Cass, and still fail to do so. But this time he got as far as to make it into the TARDIS doors, before then having his confrontation with her. He would then reluctantly close the door on her, and dematerialise just before her ship crashes. Materialising near the wreckage a few seconds later, the Eighth Doctor cradles Cass's dead body in his arms, feeling utterly broken. It's then that he snaps. He's finally been pushed too far. He argues with Ahila, the High Priestess of the Sisterhood of Khan. He tells her that he's had enough and doesn't feel like he wants to be the Doctor anymore. Ahila asks him what he wants to be instead, and Eight picks up Cass's bandolier and straps it onto himself, before saying, A warrior. We then fade to black as a caption comes up saying, The Eighth Doctor will return in the day of the Doctor. So the Eighth Doctor will become this sort of reluctant warrior type. He will be a good man who had been pushed too far and finally decided that enough was enough. Obviously, throughout the course of the Day of the Doctor, 9 and 10, those being played by David Tennant and Matt Smith, remember, would help him to eventually come up with another idea, and all of the Doctors would still save Gallifrey towards the end. A result of the different numbering would mean that the now 10th Doctor, aka our universe's 11th, wouldn't have run out of regenerations by the time of the Doctor. So the Doctor wouldn't need a new regeneration cycle, until the 60th specials in this alternate universe, with our universe's 14th Doctor now being the 13th, and he would still be another incarnation, played by David Tennant of course. As for Big Finish, the 8th Doctor would now have what we know as the War Doctor's series of audios, with the 8th Doctor Time War audios that we got still existing, but now telling the story up to the alternate Night of the Doctor. So basically, it wouldn't go 8th Doctor Time War audios, then the War Doctor ones, it would all just be under the 8th Doctor Time War umbrella, essentially. I hope that makes sense. Hello, Future Bill here. If I sound a bit weird, it's because I might have COVID at the minute, so... Yay, fun times. Sorry if you couldn't hear the rain outside as well. Uh, anyway, I've just realised whilst editing this video now that I didn't discuss how all of this would affect the rest of the 8th Doctor's Big Finish run. So, since they were all made before the new series came back, as far as I know anyway, his audios with Charlie and Chris would probably be unaffected. As for his adventures with Lucy Miller, that one's a bit harder to determine, since the whole point of that was to take inspiration from the first Russell T. Davis era, with Lucy being inspired by Rose in some ways, although Lucy was obviously still very much her own character. I don't think Magan being in the revival would have prevented him from being in Big Finish afterwards though, as Russell and Big Finish would probably have been able to come to some sort of agreement. Maybe McGann wouldn't have done any audios during the years he was filming the alternate series 1 and 2 though, i.e. from 2004 to 2006. But yeah, some version of his adventures with Lucy Miller would still have had to happen in order for all the following audios to still happen. So that's Dark Eyes, Doom Coalition, Ravenous, Stranded, etc and I've obviously already discussed the Eighth Doctor Time War stuff. Anyway, there's my take on what if Paul McGann was in Series 1. But what did you think? Do you like my take on it or not? And is there anything you would have done differently? Please let me know in the comments section below. And thanks again to Nanny Nom Noms for all their help with this scenario. Anyway, so thanks for watching, hope you liked it, please don't forget to press that subscribe button below, as well as press the bell icon at the side of it, so that you'll stay notified of when all my new videos come out. This channel currently has 1,397 subscribers, as of the time of writing and recording this video. 
But if we can get to 2,500 by the end of this year, then I will do another Q&A. We can ask me whatever questions you want. Just keep them polite, please. Also, please rate and comment below your thoughts on all of this. And please feel free to donate to my Ko-fi. A link will be in the description or leave me a YouTube super thanks below. And I shall see you all in another video. So, until next time, bye-bye.